This week on Nerds Who Get Laid Sometimes, you get our full review of Venom. We also discuss the new Aquaman trailer, Toys R Us, The Mandalorian, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That and a whole lot more, so stick around. Welcome to Nerds Who Get Laid. Sometimes. Sometimes. A magical podcast. I thought Ray was going to set his laptop on fire for a second. He had <laughs> There's it nothing. Well, he, he he's spilled alcohol enough in beer it. in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this this podcast used to be so rock and roll. It's not on. We used to have liquor bottles and, and beer bottles everywhere, and now we have a scented candle in the middle <laughs> with the Budweiser. lights off. That's just so fucking old. I know. <laughs> This, this podcast is not rock and roll anymore. This is the opposite. Yeah. We've sold out. TJ drinks coffee. I mean, he's having a beer tonight, but, you know, like, I mean, it used to be hardcore. Yeah. We used to go through at least a bottle of whiskey a night. Oh, yeah. my God. And we'd be done at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, you missed those days, man. I didn't miss shit. Oh, shit. Oh, no, you did. No, you we missed some good times. We don't pr- remember the first 100 yeah. episodes. Yeah. No. You missed the best like, times you'll never remember. <laughs> We've been doing this for two years now? Shit. <laughs> no, I remember the last time I got shit-faced drunk with y'all. I had to fucking follow a scavenger hunt to find out what happened. But you also were wondering you how just, Legos worked. <laughs> you should have just tracked the dicks on your arm. And <laughs> They're called true. pecker tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, I have been terribly sick. Good. For seven <laughs> hours, I shit and vomited, but I heard that was not nearly as bad as sitting through Venom. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty, pretty right on that, man. Um, yeah, Venom came out this week, and I can't wait to hear you boys tell me about that uh, shit show of a it movie. It was so good <laughs> that I never want to see it again. Exactly. <laughs> you want to preserve the memory of what <laughs> yeah, you... Yeah, <laughs> just like cause a second showing would just never do it as much justice. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes, makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, so, listeners, uh, just so you know, we're going to Iceland this week. Well, Chuck's not. He's, he's 80% of us 80% are. Yeah. are going. Yeah. He made some excuse last year, and, and now we're all going, and he's going to hold down the fort. Maybe you can show up and do a podcast by yourself <laughs> next he's Sunday. He's staying behind, and we're <laughs> reaping all the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, hey, everybody, it's Chuck here at Chuck Cast. I'm having fun. <laughs> well, no, I think I we determined he's supposed to live tweet. His, his entire activities. week. Yeah, his, <laughs> his entire his week. Are there, are there any wrestling things that you can tweet about this week, Chuck? Because that was yeah. a big hit. Wrestle tweets. He can wrestle with his if you depression. Go to, if you go to <laughs> Chuck's WrestleTweets.com. <laughs> dot gov no, I think slash the next, www. I think the next big thing happens after y'all get back from Iceland, I think. Well, why don't you call old McMahon and say, hey, you've been a loyal customer your entire life. Let's just whip together a quick pay-per-view for me while my friends are away. Not or a tall order. Call Chuck Bash. A one-on-one interview with Vinnie Mac. That, oh, that would be nice. Yes. Sounds very doable. Or maybe they could send you a, uh, a simulated Korean news style recreation of Chris Benoit murdering his family. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> just can't go, uh, can't go an episode without it. Yeah. So, it's just my favorite. The second question I have, guys, and I know the answer would be no, but do you guys all want to shave chops into our beards for Iceland so we look like a bunch of badasses? Uh, I already mm. have chops in my beard. I don't know to what you're referring, <laughs> sir. So when you, I spilled many a pork chop <laughs> grease in here. I was thinking today, <laughs> I was should like, be man, a whole pig by now. if we were just walking around with big old mutton chops... They'll be like, those guys are definitely Southerners from the U.S. of A. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly Alabamans. <laughs> As they walk around with their what a American Confederate flag scarves. Oh, roll man. Tide. Man, I'm pissed off, man. Couldn't rent an 83 Camaro, man. Do I was you, hoping for an IROC. Do you know how hard it was to find a waterproof USA flag jacket? <laughs> <laughs> All of those our colors don't man. run, Nathan. Shit don't, don't stick exactly. to the American flag, man. It's it. That's right. But I ah, want damn, them to buddy. see me coming miles away on those Icelandic Well, you views. want to know, yeah, born in the USA, blasting from our 757, <laughs> 30,000 feet in the air. 
kick and just ro- dropping bud by <laughs> parachute so we can have strategic <laughs> caches throughout the country <laughs> That's they it, want man. to feed us that nasty Icelandic beer. No, thank you, Anheuser Busch, <laughs> and whiskey, <laughs> gentleman Jack, the whole time. All right, that's enough about us. Let's go on to nerd ons. Let's go more about <laughs> us. <laughs> Get your nerd on. Welcome back. Here is our nerd hey. <laughs> So Here are they these are. guys list them off. This is, all this is definitely not the second time we've so done this. We're gonna go ahead and tell you that yep. there's gonna be spoilers. Yes. Because uh, we're going to give you the full... Well, I'm not. I'm going to listen. I am reacting here. Nathan but, doesn't want to see Venom. What's wrong with him? <laughs> I, you know, it's not I didn't want to see it. It's just Thursday. I closed when you guys were going. And that was about the only time I was going to go is with a group of friends. I'm definitely not going to go sit in a theater by myself. Well, you're and, missing a good opportunity to think about things <laughs> while yeah. a boring movie plays in the background. <laughs> I, I will say... And $11 to pay for the opportunity to do so. Yeah. I mean, quiet time's important. Um, so, you guys go ahead. Tell, tell me about Venom. It fucking uh, sucked. Well, nah. so, we all, we all, with the exception of uh, Nathan, went and saw it opening night, Thursday yeah. night. Um, <clears throat> it was funny, because we were, we were talking about it the whole week, like... Are we gonna do this or not? And everyone was so non-committal. It was like a yeah. weird dare. Like, are we gonna yeah. we're we gonna show dicks to each other? <laughs> yeah, because I made a joke about it at the end of the last podcast, and I'm like, are y'all fucking punking me about this now? Yeah, and Chuck got there to before be honest, everyone should have done it. It's it's not, oh I showed up and I'm like, where the fuck is everybody at, man? The previews are starting. I would like more entertaining, and I'm usually there like 20 minutes early. Oh. Yeah, it's not 2007, Chuck. We didn't punk you. <laughs> I felt like it. I was like, this is messed up. <laughs> Where's Ashton? Ashton doesn't have anything going on anymore. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, so so we all ended up um, going and watching it, and I, I know we all had low expectations already. Yeah. And Lowered I think that... Lowered expectations. <laughs> and I think that helped going to see it, because we came out and we're like, that was bad, but was it really that bad? It was. It was really that bad. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, th- I think we had already prepped ourselves for it. Uh, it hasn't looked good from the first trailer. From actually the first time we heard about it, it hasn't looked long. Yeah, remember that 30-second sneak peek of the motorcycle yeah. chase and him like flipping out in the MRI before... And the bodega. Uh, any of the... Uh, any of like the post production yeah. Venom stuff, no just CGI. like Tom Hardy being crazy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it didn't get better. <laughs> yeah, it didn't get much better than that. The CGI was pretty weak in it. Um, it had that rubbery kind of look to it. That kind of top of the line shitty CGI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of felt like a, I think he's Mike or TJ said it was like. Spawn almost. No, that was a, a uh, article. Oh, I was yeah. an article. They're like oh, okay. someone took the outtakes of the Spawn movie, put modern CGI on it, and made it for a kid that time traveled in ninety seven. I don't even think it was modern CGI on it. It's not modern, but it's not as bad as Spawn. Spawn CGI is not aged well. No, no. I think that's an unfair comparison. But I would. Well, I don't know. I would say this is like top of the line. Bottom of the barrel CGI. This now, is the yeah. best worst CGI you can get. Here's my question: or the now, worst best. This is the best middle a, a class of, CGI you can get. A lot of what I read is the movie is one of those movies that's so bad it becomes good no. because it's no, just no, that no. bad. I, I disagree no, no. with that. I no. think it's just bad the whole way through. It's not that bad though. It's not that. It's just like the it's direc- bad enough to be boring. Yeah, the director yeah. didn't yes. have a clear idea of what he wanted to I, do. I think he I had an idea. Came out of it wondering and uh, sincerely i feel like tom hardy might not be a good actor maybe he's tricked us all these years um and uh, yeah tj you you had some yeah i i don't think it was that the director didn't have an idea i think that the studio this has just the imprint of studio hands all over it sony all over it yeah any recent ip they have had they have 
bungled seriously. They probably got it. Yeah. We're like, whoa, this Dark is Knight this is someone a good power. movie. Let's cut it down and make it shitty. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I don't I don't know where you could have added anything to make it better. It felt too long you as it was. It yeah. Differently, you could have chosen yeah. different dialogue. Yeah, I could have dealt with the city sh- shitty CGI if you know the acting was better. Because what I kind of said was that the story was good, the idea was good, but the acting was very subpar. Uh, the 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 photography, the yeah, cinematography the was shot, strange. Weird. Because Shots were really it, it, weird. It, it, it would just it, it would do like real close up with like a really intense depth of field around each character so it was blurry and then it would just do a, a, like a, just a straight shot they would say their dialogue then they would switch they would say their dialogue it, it was basically like revenge of the sith yeah it were you were filming your uh movie in portrait mode on an iphone yeah because i didn't notice that and all three of y'all had, s- yeah, had I, yeah. called that out and i was, was like i don't remember that normally cinematography doesn't bother me but it was just getting under my skin and there were a lot of things like that the the cinematography was something like normally with you'll either notice it if it's incredibly good or it's really really bad um if it's just normal then you don't really notice that stuff as much uh, there was that, and the the score was the same way. Yeah. The score yeah. the entire time kept like getting on my nerves, or I keep like, a, I feel like most of the time a good score is either incredible or it's just doing justice for the movie. It's doing what it needs to in the movie. And this one, um, I just I heard all the time, and I would li- I like listening to it, and I'm like, this isn't good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, I, and I will also say, I, I think Mona Lisa from Parks and Rec, she was one of the main <laughs> characters, in it, and she was like the best actress in it. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is weird because wasn't one of the actresses, she's like a Academy nominated, like four different movies? Well, like Michelle Williams, I'm pretty sure, is yeah. Oscar nominated. Like multiple times. Uh, Tom Hardy's Oscar nominated. I know he is, yeah. yeah. You know, but. Uh, Somebody said it looked like a, a, a superhero movie from 2004. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that, 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 that's a good comparison. And I know that like music and shots seem kind of nitpicky for, you know, for the movie, but it's like so many little things were off that it just created such a mediocre product. Oh, yeah, man. Yes. Because there were times the CGI was amazing. Like the individual symbiote CGI looked amazing. Yeah. But the moment they created Venom, uh, it just. I don't know. It just didn't look good. You tell yeah. they no. spent uh, their budget was starting to run out. Now, what about the relationship between uh, Venom and Eddie? I actually hated that, and I've read a lot, a lot of people, people online be like, "Oh, it was perfect." No, it wasn't like I, they they I, and I understand like you change up characters and stuff from for movies and all, so it's not going to be exactly like the movie. I I love a lot of the MCU movies, and they absolutely do that all the time. Infinity War is a huge. Uh, change from the the comics and departure origin. from the original yeah. source material, but uh, yeah. so, so they they Eddie Brock is essentially just a loser in this. He's a uh, well, no, he he, he was a, he was a very successful um, journalist, yeah, and then he just becomes uh, he just one thing happens and he becomes a total loser, and he, he is a complete uh, loser the entire rest of the the movie. Um, Venom at one point has decided like Venom and his people are going to destroy the world and then all of a sudden just on a dime they he switches and it's like okay well now I'm going to help you save the world he's like you I'll- convinced me Eddie like fucking win like, yeah. Yeah. You do? we're both losers I'm- yeah he's like yeah. you're a loser on your planet Eddie and uh on my home world, I'm a loser too. Sounds like two like neckbeards joining forces. <laughs> yeah. yeah the the other thing that Ray brought up too right after we watched the movie uh, was that. Or was it Mike? I don't. I, it just blends together at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, we all look alike. No, it's just the uh, the <laughs> complaints were <laughs> very observation. <laughs> the complaints were just flowing heavy right yeah. afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, was that uh, Venom's character progression was yeah. really fast? It's like one minute he's bonded with with uh, um, Eddie, Eddie and then the next minute he's like. Yo, dog, and I'm not paraphrasing here. This is pretty much his dialogue. Yo, dog, let's go bust some heads and eat some shit or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Uh, that's not exactly the dialogue. <laughs> it he might is as well paraphrasing, have been. But, uh, pretty cl- it, but it might as was, well. But the dialogue been. was bad. The dialogue yeah. was yeah. rough, especially I mean, Venom's. They did it keep the a turd and yeah, that yeah. Was still it was there. there. Yeah. It was, was still there. Blown away. I, I was thought they were gonna it. like leave it out because it wasn't where Best it originally was. Like it wasn't where you expected it to be. They just kind of shoehorned it at a different part of the movie. Yeah. 
I was very disappointed the, in the, it. The whole love yeah. interest like made no sense for the no. movie. There, it didn't there need to be there at all. No chemistry. No. Um, it was just it. W- it felt so forced. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. It, what about uh, Woody Harrelson? Oh my God, that was a dumb. Ugh. That's the end. That's, cre- and that's the one of the end scene credits. The mid credit scene. And Remember honestly, how Mark he got Hamill wrote, got like top billing for being in uh, Force Awakens. Yeah. Pretty much the same thing for Woody Harrelson, except he got a couple lines. So he's he's end credit scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, do yeah get- we're also he also got to say his titular line. Oh God, man! When I get out of here, there's going to be. Carnage. <laughs> yeah, and he's wearing this horrible, <laughs> shitty carrot top wig. Yeah, it was oh. just bad. <laughs> it's yeah, it looked like if carrot top got really into drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! It's yeah. it's just a bad movie. I, and I don't get it. Like the internet, the movie like, internet pretty good comic this weekend, people, too. Yeah, I think it's I think it's mediocre. I mean, this isn't like Catwoman or anything. But I don't know. that's what people were saying, and I don't believe it deserves that. Yeah, uh, I think it has like a thirty or twenty eight or something like that. I think it is down there. Critics, I think because eighty nine. That's insane. User. It's a pretty that's big a difference. huge Idiot. difference. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's but, a, almost. Uh, I think was that Justice League had about that. Something like split? that. They had a and I would split. say like I felt like. This was maybe better than one of the two. I don't know which one I would give it: Justice League or Batman vs Superman. No, I think both of those were better than this. Really? Yes, but, yes. But I was going to say the only well. reason I was going to say was, and I think I feel that way because I expected a lot more out of the other two films and was let down a lot more. I was expecting nothing out of this. I would so. put this on the level of like the first X Men or Daredevil. I put no. this like X Men Three. Yeah. I don't know if it was that bad. I don't think no, it was that bad. Not that bad. And X Men One right. isn't bad. It's just a product of its time. That's. Ex- I mean, that's, this feels that's like what a, I'm it comparing it to. Around yeah. time was now. Could the first this fit X-Men in movie. with the Amazing Spider-Man <laughs> no. trilogy? I think so. This movie would have been amazing yeah. fifteen years ago. I don't think it would have fit in with Garfield's because Garfield Spider-Man was kind of. I fine. mean, Spider-Man Two. I thought those were fun movies. The first one yeah. was first one was, was pretty fun. He hates the, Mondays. The second one was like oh. the second one had its issues. Definitely, they, they, yeah. I thought the first one was actually pretty enjoyable. I, yeah, the I first still don't right. think it would have stood with either of those though. I think this I think it's been, just completely standalone altogether. Like it just there's no relation. They didn't do any hints that Spider-Man even exists in the in the in the movie. The closest thing was that he had a job working for a rival newspaper in New York. In New York. And, and they had to bring leave. up Jameson. One, yes. of the, one of the pilots was Jameson. But they didn't go any more into that and they didn't even say his first name. So yeah, I just one of the astronauts it, was a Jameson. It did. We, we also uh, made note of this uh, after the movie. It felt so hard like they were being like See, we're part of Marvel. See, we're Marvel. Look at us. Here's Stanley. Here he is. Yeah. He's in a Marvel movie. We're a Marvel movie. It felt like that the yeah. whole time. They were trying to convince you and this, so and, hard. Yeah, and this is the time where I'm like, who the fuck's been abusing Stan and made him appear in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> it's just... All it, the allegations it, are true. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning of it, it's... You no, know, mostly whenever you watch like a Fox Marvel movie or, or one, something that's besides Marvel Studios, it always just has the older style Marvel logo. Mm-hmm. This had that, but it said in association yeah, with Marvel association. Pictures. Yeah. Not, and the other ones don't have that. Now, I think Marvel wants to distance themselves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Especially because this one was originally an, a rated R movie, you know. And and I remember uh, them saying that they don't want any rated R content on Disney Play. Yeah. So I mean, I wonder that's if that's why they PG thirteen. So because because they just announced that it was PG thirteen, like. A month ago or yeah. something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're pushing back and forth on and, it. Yeah. And I think it was originally supposed to be R. Yeah. And it Disney was. was just like, we're going to go ahead and say, nah, dog, distance ourselves from it as, as well as we can while still representing the brand. That's what I wonder if uh, Sony... Even when they dropped it. Sony dropped PG-13. it to try to like, hey, c- see, we're, we're, we're playing ball. Yeah, we're playing I ball. don't even think if it would have been rated R, it would have done much no, more R for this rating. movie. R, it wouldn't have done anything. That, uh, no. it, a movie, if it is... Like Deadpool was already decided it was going to be R-rated when they went in to start preparing the movie. Yes, a movie like that or Logan, where like when they start pre- preparation, it's going to be R-rated. That kind of thing can help a movie. Like that kind of rating can help a movie. Yeah, but once it's like they have their few, limitations of what they can do. Yeah, they know what they're going to do, and it usually the theater or the theaters the uh, the companies stay out of it a little bit more mm-hmm. if they're R-rated as opposed to PG thirteen. So they get a little more freedom. <clears throat> um, once if it's a couple of months before 
opening and they're still trying to decide what it's going to cut, what cut it's going to be, R or PG thirteen. That's not going to help the radio. That's yeah, not going to help no. the, the movie itself. Now, to me, what that screams is they were doubting the box office pool, so they took it to PG yeah. thirteen because then that allows you that all that sweet people. stupid kid movie. I mean, it's their yep, own fault because their marketing was terrible from the get go. Yes. Like it was just at a sweet Eminem song. Garbage. Oh, yeah. That that first trailer yeah. was was horrible. All of the trailers yeah. have been pretty yeah, bad. Been the good. second one was better than the first. More than but likely, it didn't take much for that. Yeah. yeah. What they did was they shot a bunch of different shots, and it was plenty to excuse me to cobble together whether it was going to be PG thirteen or R. Yeah. And they probably had say fuck here, Tom, and say you know Jimmy G Jillickers here just in case PG thirteen. Well, in a lot of movies, uh, they don't use blood packs anymore. It's all CGI anyway. Yeah. So like, I guarantee, like it was that simple of like, all right, it's going to be PG thirteen. It's less CGI where they don't have to do as violent of a yeah, movie. Yeah, because that's true. They can put blood there anytime they want with CGI now. Yeah. yeah. There was yeah. almost no blood. Yeah. And, There's and that, one scene blood I remember. Makes a rated R movie, honestly. Yeah. If it's not if it's not bloody, you can have all the violence. Because there's you some want. crazy parts where they're really should have been some blood a lot of blood yeah Yeah. i guarantee it probably was and then they just you literally control out delete and take off the the blood layer and there you go it's pg-13 push that turn all blood off button (laughs) it's it's weird i mean in this day 2018 there's no excuse for a movie to be this terrible when there's such a good formula out there to follow on these things yeah i absolutely agree i don't know how they have done this yeah it's like if you're confused there's 20 movies now in the mcu that you can go sony yeah has a true talent for making shit movies sony and wb could literally go copy one of the movies and put in one of their characters and probably have a complete success. I would like if they took. Um, I don't even know what you would take for Venom, but some like yeah, that'd be the only thing, is that you got a villain you're trying to make a, a an and, anti-hero. And, and Marvel hasn't done that. That yet. was the other thing they did. They they tried to completely 100 percent make um make Eddie a a good guy. He was a good guy a whole time. He was uh re- he was reluctant to do all this stuff that Venom wanted to do and everything. Which I think is a little bit against the character. So I, I don't understand how Venom fans out there are like, oh, fuck yeah, this is my Venom. I love this. It's like, probably that's more not. Just, I like Venom. Here's a movie. Yeah, yeah cause I, think I think so. Because Venom people, I feel like Venom people that are fans of Venom are still t- stuck in the 90s. Yeah. They're those yeah. kind of people anyway. I mean, there's probably like a lot of people Deadpool who fans. like Venom yeah. and know, n- don't know much about him. I they, would that say might that. Be true they, they just wear the shirts at the gym. His early yeah. Venom. He ki- he killed people, but it wasn't like murder spree. Like I'm going to eat whoever I want to eat. Or no, whatever that was else. a carnage thing. Yeah, it was. Venom was always a product of going after Peter Parker and Spider Man and wanting to make those his life guys miserable. Ruined his life, yeah, yeah, or their life. So that's why. That's how he became more of an anti-hero because he wasn't actually like horrible person. He was just a dumb person that was going after Spider Man all the yeah. time. And so. he was, um, he was popular because he didn't show up much. He yeah, peel the onion and back, he, and he was scary. Yeah. And he, yeah. was he was terrifying, terrifying in the early comics. And he's an amazing design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. Truly one of the coolest. But one of the cooler or better parts of the movie was the what was it? Probably the last minute when he they're laying down the ground rules. What about? I it? think the best part was the. Uh, Five minute after credit scene of End of the Spider Verse. Yeah, that, that was, was probably awesome. the best. Part. <laughs> the best. So, no, it's, so good. It's to the point where it's Brock and Venom are pretty much going back and forth of <laughs> like. Brock and Venom. <laughs> like, this, here now. this is what we're going to do. No, <laughs> we're we're gonna, gonna, we have to ever. set some rules we're, we're, <laughs> if we're going to do this the right way. And it's like their little interaction at the yeah, end was. They had good the interaction there. They had better interaction there than the whole entire rest I of think, the movie. I yeah. think that may be the episode titled Brock and Venom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barack and Venom. Yes. All right, so uh, that's one of our nerd ons. <laughs> well, it sounds like a real big piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, it was not good, and yeah. I'm surprised that people are loving it as much. I as they am. Are. Too. If you like it, you should feel ashamed of yeah. yourself. Yeah, well, I mean, no. If you like it, tell us why you liked it. I, I, I'm, I'm legitimately interested to see, you know, what, what, what specifically about it made people like the movie? Because I mean, as far as we're all concerned, you know, even Chuck, Chuck likes anything. Uh, except for season one of Rest of Development, um, <laughs> <laughs> which means you should throw thought it was not great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I I feel it's very mediocre. I feel like we're if, not going to dog you. I legit want to yeah. know if you if yeah. you watch a good place, 
if Maybe you're in the medium you. place with Mindy Sinclair, you I know where this movie's I at. Think this yeah. is, I think it's still worse than that. I think I, I think it's I an know. actual Cannibal bad Run movie. Pretty bad, and it's <laughs> yeah. there. Well, what about Porky's two? All right. Well, besides that, Ray, what else have you been nerding out on? I, I beat Spider Man two. Oh, the, the video in the game. universe. Like, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this. I think this is the second video game I beat this year. Good for you. Wow, nice. right? I beat it. Uh, I think this week. Also, yeah. Man, I still haven't beat it. Great story so, all the way through. I'm the story 60%. is so good. Uh, I, I did mention this at one point. The the CGI and the graphics and everything in Spider Man, I think, were much better than Venom. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like all of the stuff was so much better, and it had a smaller budget, probably too. Oh, I'm sure it did. Uh, I loved all the characters. The the little things that they changed and did with, in that universe were great. The ending of it was heartbreaking. S- yeah, and so good. Um, did you watch I the, cannot, those was, credits? Huh? There's after credits. Yes, I did okay. watch the after credits. The uh, comic book costume that you're using on it mm-hmm. is I, I was my favorite costume yeah uh just looking at it in action because mm-hmm. all i've seen is like the screenshots that you posted up on it and stuff and i've i've been yeah i don't know why he's such a fan of that because that doesn't yeah. look really good with the with a static shot but looking at it in action it's like watching yeah uh like a steve ditko or a, um absolutely john ramita picture just come to life right on the The screen. The only problem I will say with it is when you get into the the cinematics, Mm -hmm. it puts you in whatever suit you're in. Yeah. And there's some really (laughs) serious stuff that comes up, and I'm in that silly costume, and it really kind of broke it for me a little bit. I was like, man, I wish I was wearing a different one. You got to make sure when you're doing the serious stuff to be uh, (laughs) a... As far as kind of... I was in the 2099 suit, and I was like, man, this doesn't really fit where I'm at in this game right now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, this is oh god, it is such a good game. I cannot wait till the DLC because um, I, I definitely want more of it. Nathan was swinging around. I've got like three more uh, cameras, picture places to find to get my last suit. The the challenges, the Taskmaster challenges have whipped my ass, so I haven't been able to afford all of the suits and everything yet. But yeah, yeah I, I, I thought got a second like, place one on anything yet. I did. I went back through because I needed more tokens. I went back through and got every second place on the combat and the sneak ones. But the other ones, I, I'm just not good at them. And I'm playing it on friendly, so I don't know. I came really close on the uh, on one of the camp uh, drone missions, I came mm-hmm. really close. Yeah, I think it was like twenty two thousand. I got like twenty thousand. Yeah, I can't deal with the bomb ones. Bomb ones are I hard. I haven't got to that yet. I the, barely get. Yeah, I barely get the last level, and then it's the increase of point value from first to, to second, second place. So much. It's mm-hmm. like by like ten thousand. I'm like I'm going from yeah. There's something I'm missing. To ten thousand. Yeah, there's something missing in the equation with with those. There's Got to be an upgrade or something somewhere that helps you get those. So I think there was speed. a quick. Uh, there's a velocity suit, and that might help. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. I did Venom and I did Spider Man. So, cool. Mike, a hundred percent of Doom. Yeah. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> that's my big thing. Uh, took me a while. All the classic maps and everything. They're fun playing. Uh, so you play through all the Doom classic maps, but you have the current weapons and current enemies really difficult at times uh but it's taken me back i might actually run through the original dooms just uh just (laughs) because uh other than that i ended up watching now i only got about halfway through conan i fell asleep Mm. but it's terrible i love it (laughs) jason Jason momoa Momoa. conan okay yeah it's uh (laughs) it's like a big old wheel of cheddar cheese (laughs) Well, that's about it for me. I mean, every, I, I saw Venom with you guys. That was my big one. It's Chuck? Venom. <laughs> uh, the only thing, uh, seriously, I've been doing this week was uh, I finally got uh, my Marvel Legends uh, Walgreens exclusive thing in the mail nice. this week. and uh, He's a hefty just fellow. Up. Yeah, it's about two pounds. He's a husky one. He's yeah. a big boy. So I now have the uh, Fantastic Four. The family is complete. So nice. I can bust those out of their package now. And... I end up having to order online because I'm not playing the game of uh, hide and seek with Walgreens anymore because our Walgreens sucks. But uh, I pre-ordered, or not pre-ordered, I ordered myself and a payment to TJ. I'm sorry, Nathan. Uh, the Walgreens exclusive magic figure. Nice. 
uh, from the X-Men, Ileana Rasputin, if you will. I thought you meant Michael the Magic, the magician from The Office. (laughs) But uh, she comes with a lot of accessories, and she's... uh, repaint or no it's a repackage of the SDCC 2015 Book of Ashanti uh, set magic so Very she cool. should be literally I thought it was going to be at least a month mm-hmm. before I got it because they're shipping from Hong Kong and it should be here probably by the time y'all leave for Iceland okay. you were nice. way off you fucking idiot I've been reading a lot of the new mutants I thought and it was going to take a while loving uh, her in those in that series I've, I always so like her in the uh, in the X-Men stuff and everything but I'm getting a lot more yeah and uh, Ray, your story. nerd on's over. Yeah. And other than that, just uh, <laughs> seeing wow. some stuff that's been revealed from uh, New York uh, Comic Con this week. So Like hobos. Yeah. All right. Good one, Chuck. One of the betters. Um, way, to, way to whelm us. Not over or underwhelm. <laughs> just whelm us. Oh, just whelmed. right amount of whelming. Uh, you know, I finally watched I watched a few movies this week. Actually. I, I watched yeah, Solo. Yeah, you did. Yeah. What'd you think of Solo? He, you know, he, he's going to watch it again. Solo, he can't hear it. Ew. Uh, it was good. It was a very enjoyable movie. Well, yeah, I thought so it? too. I thought it was great. <laughs> um, the, the only thing is while watching that movie, I think I'll talk to you guys about is I did not feel I was watching a young Han Solo. We, uh, I don't know, me and TJ and Ray had a long conversation. Well, me and Ray had a long conversation about this. But our, our idea is that, you know, it's kind of a a younger, more hopeful Solo that we're seeing. And I guess that kind of makes more sense because when we see Solo, you know, he's a realist. He, uh, he's a cynic. Uh, Not as jaded yet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he, uh, this is, what, 10, 20 years later yeah. that Star Wars takes place? Well, maybe not that. Well, it's around about that. 10. About 10 years. I mean, that's a lot of time, especially with the events of Solo. I mean, he, granted, it's retconned through the whole thing, you know, but I mean, it seems like... a it's a lot of things that would turn him into the solo that we know from the original trilogy. Yeah. That's my argument for it, but I do agree it, it, it uh, but that's my really my only gripe. My, yeah, my, my, my thought process is I think they were hoping that this would do better. Cause it seems like they were set up a sequel. At yeah. The end. Well, they fucked themselves royally yeah. once again with marketing. And yes. I feel that they wanted to kind of take solo from being this optimistic person and with his love interest turning, yeah. you know, to the dark side. And I would love to see it, especially with the, the surprise reveal at the end of, yeah. you know, the villain. No, yeah. after seeing that, I was like, man, I would really actually like to see a follow up to it. Hey, yeah. And Woody Harrelson was great. I yeah, he was fantastic. Yeah, her, everybody was really good. I mean, like I said, even uh, I can never remember her name. Uh, Amelia Ky- Clark. Yeah, Amelia Clark. She you was. You guys better yeah. be careful. I forgot who it was. There's yeah. gonna be Star Wars. <laughs> Several parts through it, I forgot who it was. Yeah. It was. I yeah, she actually acted well, unlike yeah. in Terminator Genesis. Yeah, very true. No, she really did. She had held her own on there. The the action was. I thought it was just a real fun. You know, just like. like Roller coaster of action, the entire yeah. thing. Like it's uh, a solid movie, and I didn't feel because uh, we uh, way back. If you've listened to us for a while, we were like, "You're gonna peel away all these onion pieces, and it's gonna make him not as cool." What's cool about him is that you don't know about the Kessel Run. But I felt like the way they did it. I don't know. Worked. Some stuff was kind of lame. Like, no, it was. here's his belt and holster. This is where he gets oh, it. No. Oh yeah, man, there was no. those parts. I was just like, ah, come on. But really, that's about it. I, yeah. I did like they didn't make then a big deal this, when, this, he got, when he got when he got the gun, it, like yeah. the way that he just you know he takes apart a rifle, tosses him, and that's his hand, you know, his gun now. Yeah, yeah. you I'm, know, like things like that were very nonchalant. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. I think uh, you'd said also that the Chewy, I thought, yeah, I thought, uh, meeting was pretty awesome. That, the Chewy meeting was good. I thought yeah. Chewbacca was like the best part really of the entire good. movie, the yeah. whole thing, like his whole story of Style him trying to get he back to his people. The fuck out of it. I mean, for a guy in a giant hair suit, he did really good at like you know portraying. Fucking as much as Chewbacca yeah, I, can train. I, I, I would want to fight a fucking mud wookie. <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> no, sir. That's like Popeye. No, sir. I, I did start no, laughing. Guaranteed like, ass wood. Because you never see it again, but like fucking Han actually like doing Chewy, like, uh, like, or speaking uh, Yeti. Yeah, doing Chewy. <laughs> Chewy. Yeah, yeah. That's a they, they watched the wrong movie. Yeah, yeah. That was a different movie. It was, ha- it was Star Han Wars Solo? again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Han Solo. And, it was, <laughs> and he took it down. Um, and then I also watched Ant Man and the Wasp today. Yeah. Um, Solid movie. Solid. Yeah, another movie. another just good, just middle of the pack, enjoyable movie. And tell me that 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 uh, de aged uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas yeah, was. was an amazing. You know, hers I thought looked a little wonky, but I thought he looked really good. 
Yeah. Oh. You looked amazing. She, uh, hell, she looks good nowadays. I was like, yeah. 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 I was like, hello, yeah. Michelle. I, I, I would Michelle court her. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you want to play Catwoman yeah, I was like, again? You still got that Catwoman suit somewhere? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we can do that. Tim Burton somewhere. Yeah. Michael Keaton ain't doing shit. Yeah. No. But my my favorite thing in the whole movie was I love the end credit where they just recreated all, not the, not the after credits, the credits, sorry, uh, where they recreated scenes in the movie with the little miniature action figures. I yeah. just, I was like, that's just yeah. genius. Like little. It makes it makes sense in Ant Man's world. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I thought you were still talking about Solo for a second. I'm like, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> and I also watched Ron Jurassic Howard, Park: Fallen Kingdom, Kingdom today as well. And that what movie, was that? Jurassic Fallen Park Kingdom. or Jurassic oh. World: Fallen Kingdom. Had you not seen that? <laughs> no, yet? I had seen. It. I just okay. rewatched it for the first oh, okay. time. Uh, there's a bunch of good movies on our Voodoo guys. There uh, is. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Ocean's Eights on there. I'm gonna watch that nine. Tonight. No, mm-hmm. eight. 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 It's eight. the yes, it's the real one. one. That one's pretty good. Anyway, um, but Jurassic World we watch that. still it was not pretty as, decent. Not as good. It nah. did. It did not. Second watching was not as enjoyable. <laughs> uh, but that's it for my nerd on. All right. Um. Anyway, moving on <laughs> to the news. Uh, we'll end this one on a low note. <laughs> this week, um, I've been doing a lot of podcasts this week. Um, thanks so, for inviting us, Dick. <laughs> So I've been listening to uh, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History and uh, going through the World War <laughs> One episodes, and yeah, it's so good, but you just need a palate cleanser in between those three and four hour descriptions of how how men are dying and what kind of shitty conditions they're living in. Millions of deaths. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, why in the that hell? Now I'm into the meat grinder. Yeah, and they're talking about in... Uh, 1917, like, the French soldiers are beginning to say, fuck this, <laughs> we're not going up there. And it's no, like, it's, it took you three years to do that? It's funny how they finally realize, like, we're fighting for literally bullshit contracts and the treaties that these guys yeah. signed years ago. And yeah, not, not to mention they're dressed like they're fighting in the fucking Civil War with <laughs> yellow, <laughs> red, and yeah. blue outfits <laughs> and their <laughs> shitty show show machine guns that sucked ass. No, Swords. they get past that after the first year. They they finally get, like, metal helmets two years later and well, shit. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> good for you guys. Shock the <laughs> view. What the this sort of theater of metal helmets? Yeah. Um, so between <laughs> they were them, made out of baguettes before that. <laughs> <laughs> These are expired. They will stop blitz. <laughs> um, so between those, I've been listening to other things. Uh, Unobscured Crickets. is a new um, podcast by Aaron Minky that does lore, Ooh, and Aaron it's supposed Minky. to be a season long uh, podcast about a different subject every season. So this one is on the Salem witch trials. Uh, so he's going into the background of how they started and everything else, and then he's going to go into a a whole ordeal. They just had the one episode started up this week, mm-hmm. so uh, that was interesting. But and that's called unobscured, unobscured. But the one I really enjoyed was one uh, when I was listening to the most recent episode of J and Miles explain the X Men. They had a doctor on there who has a podcast on there called the Arkham Sessions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And what that one is is a podcast where this uh, criminal psychologist will watch an episode of the Batman animated series, and they're starting at like the first episode and going on, and will uh, go through the psychosis of the uh, criminal on the episode, and give a real life example of you know a criminal that did something similar to that and everything. And I'm about five or six episodes in on that, and it's been a lot of fun. Is it one episode per criminal or one episode? One episode per episode, episode of the show. show. Okay. Yeah. And they just break down every criminal that's on the episode. Yeah, they break down the episode, what happens on it and everything, and then they break down that criminal. So, like, the first episode of the animated series was Man Bat. So they go into it, and they're like, yeah. so what's Man Bat's deal? What's, well, he's a what's fucking going on? bat. <laughs> But also a man, <laughs> and he's pissed about being there. Um, so they've go- gone through uh, Poison Ivy and the Joker and um, Scarecrow at this point. Scarecrow would be an interesting one. Yeah, Scarecrow was pretty fun for them to go through. Joker's been on there twice because of the way the, the, the episodes f- when episodes were uh, done, and then um, wonder what he's going to do. Batman. They do it the whole time there's a running joke to the about batman psychosis that's well that's like the episode where the scarecrow gets him and he's in a dream the whole time and he can't read you know when somebody else is batman 
Remember that episode? I don't remember that one, but yeah. So yes, yeah, uh, uh, the entire episode is a huge mind fuck. Yeah, like Bruce Wayne isn't Batman; he can't understand it, and also he can't read. Like uh, everything is gibberish, and that's how he kind of figures it out because you normally can't read in your dreams because right brain, left brain. Mm-hmm. But I guess Scarecrow was like fear gassing him the whole time. But it was a it was a pretty cool episode. I think my favorite Scarecrow episode of that was the one where. Um, they made he, he wins the award for being most outstanding in his field. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they think that Batgirl died, <laughs> and Jim Gordon's hunting Batman down and everything else. Oh, that's fucking cool. It man. was yeah. He he comes after him in force and just fucks his day up in police force. Yes, I need to rewatch the animated series again. It's so good. You got to do it on uh DC Universe. Yeah, DC Universe because they're high def. Yep. And it's I downloaded some for called, our trip. No, that's called closed captioning, not high def. If you do it on uh, Amazon, you got to pay like twenty bucks per season. So oh, yeah. they were on there for a while. Uh, they were. They were, they were prime for a while. The most expensive show I've ever seen is the Red Green show. They won like two hundred and fifty dollars. Jesus. For the series, that's because they only made like one run of them. There's like five. They're of them on Prime the now world. for free. The Red. They're also on YouTube for free. Yeah. Red lot, Green's on Prime for free now. A lot of all like okay. uh, Prime has a bunch of YouTube stuff on there, like as shows okay. now, like Angry Video Nerd and stuff like that. So. Okay. But all right, is that it for Nerd on? I think so. Yeah, all right, when we come back, fuck off to the news, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce you to the newsman of the evening, Jimmy Ray Hancock. Come on now, he's with the news. All right, guys, so we got some news. Uh, Nathan had to excuuse himself, uh, so... We're He's got going, tummy trouble, I think. We're going, yeah. uh, we're going Nathan less you know, now. If, uh, Chuck had been on time, he might have been able to stay. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Also, Nathan showed up a half hour early and didn't realize it, so that was pretty fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> someone knocked at my door a half hour early. I was like, that can't be the guys. No one here is that early. So Ray had Nathan. to put on pants a half hour yeah. early. Just yeah. fucked his whole time schedule up. But let's talk about some news. Yeah. All right. It's your peen early. The first news was uh, Nathan got here early. Second news is Toys R Us. Might mm. be making a comeback. This made yeah. my week. Yeah, I know. Y'all are, y'all, I was excited. You and TJ are pretty excited about it. Tell mm-hmm. us tell us a little bit about Tell Tell the listeners a little bit about this. Well, TJ posted uh, in our message uh, about, uh, hey, Toys R Us is possibly coming back, Chuck. And I read the article, and I'm like, hey, can you explain this to me? Because I don't understand the financial talk that's involved. But pretty much from what TJ explained to me was there's still a lot of market value yeah. Left in the name, yeah. They were about to auction off the. Uh, I think it was the third. They were supposed to auction the name off because mm-hmm. uh, they've gotten rid of all their other assets, and uh, I guess they still have a board and whatever else. And they decided, you know what, our name is worth more than we would get at the auction mm-hmm. uh, for this. So we're gonna try to run this. Um, Trouble is, there's still five billion dollars in debt. Not, and that's with a B, guys. Yeah, um, that's a lot of debt. But that's not all the debt that they incurred, wasn't it? The company or whoever bought them out in the first place didn't they dump their debt onto them? Also, it's there's it's a, a weird lot of thing that like we should watch and stuff and to it. all that. But so there's suffice a lot it to say, they still have a lot of debt to yeah. overcome. So there, yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of this financial stuff going on. But w- w- what does this exactly mean for Toys R Us? Um, apparently they're looking at coming back, uh, with the name, mm-hmm. um, and with Toys R Us and Babies R Us and selling product again. Um, the issues right now that I can see, and I've seen a couple of things. I haven't gotten into a lot of detail on it. Um, but the, the things that I've seen out there are that they're looking at either a renting retail space from another 
retailer. Mm-hmm. Like if you go into a store, there'll be a toy section that's the Toys R Us toy section or something like that, or the Babies R Us baby section. Yeah. Um, so that's it's one way, I guess, to get past the uh, having to own a retail space. And it would save the money. It would save the money on that side of it, and it would probably save them money as far as employees and such like that in a yeah. store. Um, but then you've got the added cost of having to split your profits and everything with yep. whoever you're renting from. So there's there's a lot of things that are still up in the air. They're saying, and I can't believe this is true, but they they're making they're trying to say that they're going to be doing some stuff by Christmas, and there's. I can't see any possible way they're doing it by this Christmas. No, because they have... How do you get back into good faith with the vendors that you've owed money to? Oh, that I'm, that's the least of it. You're you are two months out from Christmas right oh, now. You're in prime Christmas shopping season right now. Yeah, and there's no... Um, the only Toys R Us open are Canada and some global. Yeah, so I, I can't see them coming back with a U.S. presence before this Christmas there's an, I I don't know unless they open their website but still even then, they don't have a, they don't have an inventory or stock right now that we know of it's true too uh so it's it's weird there's a lot of things that are still unclear right now it's but they've been uh frankenstein or zombified if you want to call it mm-hmm. that so there's some somewhat of a hope all right well uh moving on Amazon is looking like they are going to uh to be doing another fantasy series. They're going to be doing um Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time series. That's which is kind of in- interesting. So uh they're they're already locked into Lord of the Rings and they're spending a a large amount of money on that. Um so this is an, another one. This is a a huge huge series that uh I mean people love this. Uh Mike, are you f- have you read The Wheel of Time series? No, it's something I never got into. I'm not too familiar with the uh, with it at all. So, no, unfortunately, <laughs> the well, one sci-fi you know fantasy series I never got into. Yeah, and it's one of the uh, one of the bigger ones, other than you know Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. TJ, have you read any of this? No, Chuck, nothing. I remember there. Was I know people love it. The show that was supposed to come out and it had the weird pilot with Billy Zane. Yes, oh, yeah. I remember that a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. Someone was trying to like not lose the rights to it or something, and it just came out one day. Yeah, and it was yeah, like I forgot all about that. Like, weird, like it looked like a theatrical play, but it was just the two characters sitting there. So it's just one of those weird things. <laughs> Are you pausing it? Are we keep rolling? Keep rolling. Okay. I have a neighbor. I'm just shutting Mike down. Mike just reseated himself somewhere else. No, Mike was being smart yeah. about it. I don't blame you. Yeah. In front of the air I was, conditioning. I was surprised you didn't do that at the news break. I was like, <laughs> yeah. man, Mike. <laughs> I was getting my things together. <laughs> <laughs> he was working it out. Mm. All right. So, uh, so yeah, we've got the Wheel of Time coming. We've got Lord of Rings. And they're also working on Conan the Barbarian. So uh, Amazon seems to have the fantasy world uh, pretty tapped right now, the fantasy market for, uh, for yeah, shows. I, was, I mean, their only competitor is Game of Thrones, and that show's on the way out. Yeah. It would behoove them to, you know, kind of get ahead of the pack and fill that void. Which sounds like what they're doing, so. Ed Zachary. So, uh, speaking of fantasy stuff, it looks like Netflix is going to take on uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, they're they're working on some <laughs> movies and uh, and shows. It's going to be sort of a light reboot, because there were several of these that have already come out. Yeah, Disney didn't Disney do them? Yeah, I don't know. I just think of that Lonely Island. Oh song. yeah, <laughs> Chronic, Chronic what? what? Goes to Narnia. Narnia. Man, that was such a good one. <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys about the time that I saw Chronicles of Narnia in the theater, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. While okay. on Chronic, there was a <laughs> th- there's a uh, two gentlemen that used to come to the theater a lot. Their names were Rom and Brian. And they lived at kind of like an assisted living facility because they were both a little developmentally delayed, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, they were nice guys, but they were always at the theater. And this one time, because Rom had to have been 6'5", he's just this huge dude. And I'd see him punch the Tekken 2 machine at the theater all the time when he was (laughs) losing. But 
he, him and Brian would talk throughout the you know the movies quite frequently. Like one time they got into a yell fight in the middle of a movie. <laughs> Or were and, and, where were and, they at Venom? <laughs> no, yeah. this was years ago, and they uh, <laughs> like when explosions would happen, Rom would sh- rock back in his chair like he got hit with with them and go wah. But uh, th- th- by far the best thing was we were watching <laughs> Chronicles of Narnia: The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and spoilers uh, after Aslan slash Jesus dies. <laughs> And, you know, they're doing the final battle, and the good guys are getting their asses kicked. And fucking Aslan, you know, shows up at the last minute, makes a roar. Like Thor and in Infinity yeah. War. <laughs> Rom stands up in the middle of the theater and just yells at the top of his lungs, Aslan! Fucking lion! <laughs> as loud as he could. It was so fucking cool. Aslan <laughs> fucking lion. That he Man. yelled it as loud as he could. Oh, it was. Uh, it made that movie way better. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> so that, that that's my that's my Chronicles of Narnia story. That's a really good that's one. better than Bill Pullman's speech in Independence Day. <laughs> it got me motivated, man. I wanted to punch everything that wasn't a lion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we've we've been hearing about this John Favreau uh, thing, Star Wars thing that's going to be on the oh, new yeah. Disney play. And we finally got uh, a little bit of insight of what this is going to be. It's going to be called The Mandalorian. Uh, the synopsis, uh, I'll read it here. After the stories of jo- uh, uh, Jango and Boba Fett, another warrior emerges in the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian is set after the fall of the Empire and before the emergence of the First Order. We follow the travels of a lone gunfighter in the, out- the, in the outer reaches of the galaxy, far from the authority of the, uh, the New Republic. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm into it. Uh, John Favreau is, is, I mean, he's pretty good at what he does. They also announced some of the, um, some of the directors and uh, Watts. Well, I don't know what TT from uh, Thor oh, nice. is going to be doing like at least, uh, yeah, um, at least one of the episodes. I'm oh. excited because the Mandalorians oh. are pretty much like the Spartans of the Star Wars universe. They're just Absolutely. militant yeah. and badass. What I like about this, too, is I don't know if we've really gotten it yet, but this is kind of your first Western set in Star Wars. Oh, that's true. I mean, it's it our gunslingers. Yeah. yeah, it sounds very no, no, Star Wars. I mean, it sounds like a very much like a Western, like he's going from town to town. The yeah. man with no name. Yeah. Series right, and everything. What once went wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm. Uh, this is one of the things, of course, they're, I feel like they're developing hard. And putting a lot of stuff into to get people onto Disney Play. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like this is, I mean, it's going to do it for me, probably. Well, I mean, Star I'm, Wars is arguably their biggest, if not their second biggest draw. I mean, they yeah. might as well come out of the gate swinging. Yeah. And it's um, kind of falls in that same time period that the Resistant, uh, Star Wars Resistance comes in as yeah. well, that new animated series. Yeah. So I wonder if this Mandalorian will make a, make a show in any of that stuff. Now, is this a live action or animated? Live, so live action. action. Live action? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Is that a good ooh or a bad yeah, ooh? Yeah, it's uh, good. Uh, yeah, they they just had a, a still that, you know, I showed at the uh, Venom. Uh, there was a still of the main character of yes. the Mandalorian. Yeah. Ooh, that's right. Yeah, and it looks good. It looks the costume really good. looks really good. I mean, yeah, it's it, a Mandalorian. It too, I mean, it's, it, it, it looks like Boba Fett because Boba Fett wore Mandalorian armor, but yeah. it's a lot different, and it, you know, they're just accents that you can tell this is what it's from. Yeah, I thought that was like from a game you showed me. No, that's no, from the, no, that's that's from the, the show. show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we got a little bit more information on the Disney Play this week as well. Uh, it looks like the it's going to be launching in 2019. Uh, they said they're going to have somewhere around uh, 500 movies and about 7,000 episodes of Disney-related TV stuff. Oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's gonna have um, have the entire entirety of the like studios animation and live uh, action things like uh, Pixar and stuff like that. Uh, but um, there will be some things missing because we found out that the first, I, th- I guess, the first three, no, the first two trilogies, first, of Star yeah, Wars, the first yeah. six are uh, are not going to be available in there because. They don't own the TV rights. Yeah, TBS I think they were talking, owns them. Yeah, that's what TBS, I was TBS. And TNT, so Turner 2020 Brock. is when they should. Uh, 20, 2024. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah. 20, 24, yeah. Which is really odd that this would fall under television. 
because it, it's probably they probably uh, like broadly put under broadcasting rights. Yeah, I, w- I would say the laws are probably older than streaming, so it, yeah. it falls under that. Maybe I don't know. I remember growing up in the longest time we would watch like on Thanksgiving or Christmas when they were airing. They rent they would air the original three. No. Yeah. On uh, I think it was like TBS, and yeah, so it's what, been like the that first since. time I saw Star Wars was Empire Strikes Back on TBS. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It, it was. I was probably ten. It was Thanksgiving because oh, wow. I didn't know that Christmas was a uh, Christmas story on TBS. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't know what was going on because at first started with Luke at Dagobah, and then Han getting chased <laughs> out of the asteroid with the big yeah. fucking worm monster. I'm like, what the fuck is going? First on? time I saw uh, Star Wars, like Episode Four. The uh, original one was on CBS uh, back wow. in the day at wow. my grandpa's. Yeah. Now I watched it on VHS the first time I saw it. So That's how I watched Empire in yeah. Return of the Jedi. Since we were not getting the first six movies, you said? Yeah. Until yeah. 2024. 2024. What about the Ewok movies? I doubt they'll put that stuff on there. They, they, they've distanced themselves from yeah, a lot of that. kind of like... What? It's not as... Uh, persona non grata is the uh, holiday special, but yeah. I liked. I enjoyed. Oh, I used watch to watch those, the fuck out of those. Allison loves them. She used to watch them all yeah. the time too. Yeah, Katie's got but, them on I mean, DVD. But I mean, it's the I same thing. You're not going to get uh, Song of the South on there. They're just not going to put that. You know. Oh yeah. Anything mm-hmm. that they're mildly embarrassed by, they're not going to put on there. Yeah, if oh, they're yeah, not yeah. doing any of their R-rated stuff, then they're not doing. Any yeah, and that, of that, that was stuff. the other thing. It looks like we're not going to be getting any R-rated stuff on this, at least. Well, At the I mean, to, why put your R-rated content that you're going to have on Disney Play when you can have a separate streaming service <laughs> to have all of their R-rated content Disney on? Disney X Play. For the yeah. same yeah. amount. Yeah. Or a premium subscription. Yeah. Or I, some, I, I, I some st- craziness. There's a monetary reason for this. It is no, not absolutely. A, it is definitely not a yeah, cause like, consumer reason. Every time I log into my Netflix, it's like my profile was like kids. I'm like, what the fuck? So you can literally set up a parental control. I think I deleted my kids' one. But I'm saying you yeah. can set parental controls to that way your kids can't watch it. It's handy. I'm still, uh, yeah. I'm still hoping for a mid to late '90s HBO Cinemax format to where they only <laughs> show R-rated content after 11:30 <laughs> at night. <laughs> you can only, only stream it after eight thir- or 11:30. But only 11:30 <laughs> at night, Saudi Arabia time or something Ooh, like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh gosh, guys. Okay, so. On Twitter the other day, Chris Evans... Kanye deleted his Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Did he really? Yep, that's all over the news right now. I didn't now. even know it. Mm. Uh, Chris Evans officially rapped on Avengers 4. It was an emotional day, to say the least. Playing this role over the last eight years has been an honor. To everyone in front of the camera, behind the cameras, and in the audience, thank you for the memories. Eternally grateful. Uh, Chris Evans, so that's a... Seeming like it's gonna be probably his farewell uh, from the Captain America role. Uh, he they people rapped. People are losing their mind over this. They're people so upset. Love Chris he Evans, is, but he's good. Did, he is so good in that role. I know role. he's good, but he's been wishy washy for a long time. And he signed a deal to do one more movie, which yeah. was Avengers Four. People know he was leaving. Well, people don't always know that stuff. We we, we yeah. keep up with this stuff a lot more than other people do. So on, some, on top of true. that, okay, too, yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, Hemsworth's been the same way until Ragnarok, and then he's kind of changed his tune a lot. Um, because Hemsworth was really on board of okay after this Avengers thing, I'm kind of I'm the ass and I'm out. I'm scooting boots, and then here comes Ragnarok, and he got have a lot more fun in the role, got yeah. to have a little more say in it. And so he's kind of happy now, with, especially with the way they've taken his character. So he's, and he's younger. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think. Maybe he's not. I don't know. He seems he's, younger. He is a little younger. Okay. Yeah, I think Evans is in his early 40s, I Evans think. Evans has yeah. wanted to do some directing and stuff like that, too. So it's sad to see him go, because he was a good um, Captain America. He was great. He at was, that Steve Rock. Like, it's one of those like who else could you have cast as Steve Rogers because he literally it's like RDJ as Tony Stark. Yeah. yeah, I mean Chris Evans he's been acting for twenty years now. Yeah, mm-hmm. and eighteen of those have been yeah I'm Marvel. A, I, I was uh, watching a a video the other day. It was kind of a fan type thing, but it was a kind of a uh, essay on where uh, Steve Rogers and Captain America became more a better character than Tony Stark and Iron Man in the MCU and how they went and everything. 
And it was really interesting how they put it because they described it kind of the Russo effect. Because mm-hmm. um, after Winter Soldier, you know, that's where Chris Cap Evans really started. Yeah, Caps really shines. Mm-hmm. And Robert Downey Jr. kind of stays stuck in that. They call it a Whedonism where he kind of distills someone to their core characteristic. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of where they've left Iron Man is that kind of arrogant asshole. Yeah. And they haven't really changed him because if you compare how his character was in Iron Man 1, for instance, um, Tony Stark, is, you know, he wants to stop selling weapons because he's scared of hurting people. Yeah. And then after he finds out he killed, he makes a killer robot in Age of Ultron, he's like, ha, ha, you know, that's kind of funny. You know, I kind of did this and didn't tell you guys. Well, at that point, I feel like it, it was less telling about a story and more let's get to Infinity War. Exactly. And so his, but you can see how his character changed up, though, in Civil War, where he's kind of become more responsible again. He's kind of become more yeah, that guy he was starting to go on through Iron Man 1 and part of Iron Man 2. Yeah, but Russo's hiccups. really get this. Yes, get how to do this. This huge. Well, they had that that, that whole PTSD. Uh, yeah, you know, which was uh, an interesting idea for uh, the Avenue Post Avengers. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I guess Tony's kind of hit a stride. Yeah, uh, especially since like Homecoming. Yeah, you know him having to take a more fatherly mentor role. Yeah, in Civil mm-hmm. War and Homecoming and Infinity War, you can kind of see that a yeah. different progression for him where he's kind of changed up. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we, let's talk about some trailers. We we got a few of them this week. Some new ones. Uh, mm-hmm. Spider Man into the Spider Verse. We already talked about. We saw that at the end of Venom. If you stay for Venom, stay till the end because this will be the best part you get out of it. Um, yeah. A new trailer. We're introduced to uh, Peter Porker, Spider Ham, mm-hmm. uh, Spider Man Noir, yeah. Spider Man Noir, Spider Gwen. Uh, Who's the other one with the um, girl so, with the Spider? I think she's the Japanese one and. Mm-hmm. Is it not the one the no. SPI no, that's slash Spider? Slash, uh-huh. That is uh, another universe. That's uh, the daughter of Peter. Okay, and is that one where Peter's all fat? And I'm old, not sure, like but she literally is the one that is. Um, that's not. She has not the power. Mayday. Th- yeah, it is. That is Mayday. That's, that's Mayday. Not Mayday. I'm pretty sure that's I'll not Mayday. Up. Anyway, there are several other Spider Men that we're introduced to. You get a little bit more from uh, from. Uh, Peter Parker Prime, I guess we'll call him. Yeah, um, for lack of a better word. Yeah, and uh, this movie hasn't looked anything but good since we've gotten uh, no. trailers for it. So, uh, so what what do you guys think of this new trailer? Uh, it's got me more hyped for it. I've, yeah. I've been on board since the first trailer. It's only looking better and better. I just love that scene, and they do it in every Spider-Man movie where he's kind of crawling on the ceiling mm-hmm. and trying to dodge the person underneath him so they yeah. don't see him, and then there's five or six of them up yes. there on the fucking ceiling <laughs> just trying to yeah. dodge. And it's just... I, I feel like I, this... It's those little touches like that. Mm-hmm. And I, the, uh, it, the, the Venom... Uh, tr- sequence that they showed us because no other way to put it where uh miles goes to peter parker's grave and, and yes and then peter's there behind him and he gets knocked out they're yeah drug along by the oh, train that was so good and it's just little things it's not it's no there's no real like huge thing that pops out that says no. man this is going to be awesome it's those touches that show that somebody somewhere that loves spider-man yeah made this that's why i wonder like this is sony yeah how why didn't they have these people working on the venom movie god i don't know um but th- it feels like this is someone number one like you said loves the characters um and they uh, all because we've talked about this a lot um spider verse was a completely stupid dumb bad idea mm-hmm. executed excellent yes yeah so much fun so good sounded like the worst thing i've ever heard in my life and this looks like they're tapping into that fun yeah um it it doesn't look like it's a, a retelling of spider verse no it looks completely mm-hmm. different because it's time, got the same idea behind it yeah they're all the different spider men spider people are coming from all the different universes because the uh, super collider but uh it's penny parker okay is who it is uh 
She was adopted by Aunt May and Uncle Ben after her parents died. So okay, okay. Not well, it looks like uh, Jake Johnson from New Girl is actually voicing. It Peter. is. I yeah, it is. That they have a pretty like Leaf Schreiber yep. is Kingpin. They have yep. a pretty. Yeah, good, uh, Cage is Spider Man Noir. Lily yeah. Tomlin is Aunt May. Oh, nice. Oh, that's good. And I like some of the villain designs you've seen so far, like the Scorpion, Prowler, Kingpin, Prowler. Uh, I like the different styles that they take too. So it looks like yes. they're from different universes. Like, like Scorpion looks real. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Kingpin looks really, I don't know it's how very, to put it's it. It's very stylized. Yeah. Kingpin is definitely the Morales universe. Yeah. yeah. And then you have, uh, if they showed Ultimate Green Goblin, I think in the first trailer, or the, mm-hmm. they showed him again in this so. one, but it's the Ultimate Green Goblin where he looks just super roided out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that looks like an actual fucking goblin, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is looking great. This comes out uh, cr- uh, around Christmas. It's yep. d- uh, December 24th. Something first, I think. No, that's, no, that's Aquaman. That's Aquaman. Yeah. Which uh, good segue. Know. Let's. Uh, I'm saying it's in October. Oh, it's the 14th. This one's December 14th. I believe that that week and a half between yeah. that and Christmas, I got three movies I'm watching. Oh, it's really December. That's really that rare. Rare. The one. Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Yeah. Bumblebee. Aquaman and and yeah. uh, the Spider Man. So speaking mm-hmm. of Aquaman, we got an extended trailer um, that Five seemed longer than it was, but. Uh, it was it was pretty long, and there was a lot going on there. And I think the last time we talked about Aquaman, we probably were on about the same page we were with Venom when it was we're coming out. We're dogging on it. It was yeah. very it looks bro. much better. It still looks very bro. It's very bro. No, not it's compared to the first trailer. No, and Aquaman still is still very bro. very bro. Oh, I know, but he wasn't doing all the, the crazy little quips that he was but, doing for him. That. Um, the CG looks better. <laughs> yes. A lot yes. better in this. <clears throat> um, and the... Man, the Black Manta is that his yeah. name? Mm-hmm. It looks mm-hmm. awesome. Amazing. Yes, he does. It looks awesome. They they have one very long shot in this um, of them running through a, uh, a, a rooftop, city, a rooftop. Yeah, and that was really good. I guess that's because uh, di- the director is it James Wan. Yes, yes. Uh, maybe ha- I know he's a Fast and Furious guy, but maybe he has some acting chops to him too. So uh, I don't think I've seen anything else. I haven't even seen those, so I don't know that I've seen any of his films. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen an outdoor continuous shot too, and that yeah, was a and that really, was a really nice good one. one. <clears throat> so I'm actually looking forward to this. Uh, that well, I saw the Shazam preview again, uh, the old one. Mm-hmm. That's kind of uh, warming up to me, and that I'm one's warming, warming up, up to me. Too. And the same thing with this, and I think also like. Going Ven- to see something like Venom like what really brings you back. Terrible taste. Like, mm-hmm. this is how bad it could be. Yeah. Let's appreciate these other movies. Yeah, and I, I really honestly feel like that's part of what this is, because like, well, we've, with things like Infinity War, we've been kind of spoiled lately. Oh, yeah. Um, but, well, I mean, it was so good that they're thinking about opening up an Oscar category for superhero movies. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, that's what we're used to now. Yeah. So... Aquaman's not looking as bad anymore. No. I just... There's a couple points in the trailer where I'm like... Like, the guys that are on the seahorses and they ride up for battle and there's yeah. dudes on fucking sharks and like... That's yeah. fucking Somewhere amazing. our general made a wrong yeah. decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be looking over and being like, who the fuck ordered these <laughs> seahorses? Well, I'm on a goddamn... I know they're a horse, but come on. Because <laughs> seahorses... That's a fucking shark. I know stuff about seahorses and I also know that uh, seahorses don't even swim. Yeah. They just float in the currents. So yeah. someone made a real bad decision. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the the big battle that they show at the end with all the sea creatures yeah. and everything yeah, else, it or stations or whatever, badass. It really does. And the than, Captain Hook Croc eating that like like <laughs> big old craw daddy in half. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just that whole that sequence there, it, it looks really good and it looks really well shot. It, it looks like a monster truck fight, but with sea creatures. <laughs> pretty <laughs> much <laughs> is the best way I can describe it. A Which monster is not bad truck at all. Fight. No. <laughs> No, especially if you're going to have such a bro movie. Like, yeah. I, I, what was everyone's thought of him in the the arn uh, the orange and green? Look better suit. than I thought. Yeah, a lot better than I yes. thought it would be. I'm I'm really glad that these comic book movies are starting to embrace their comic costumes. Yeah, um, especially with things like Captain Marvel coming out. Oh and then, yeah, yeah. Um, Not to mention they're starting to make them look good. Yes. You know, I, I I don't know, like with the original X Men, because we talk about this all the time. If maybe they just couldn't get it right, like make it look realistic yet still comic accurate, or if they just didn't give a shit. I but, don't know because uh, there's always the argument that like cosplayers have been doing it for years, making them look good on 
budgets, pretty yeah. pretty good budgets. And I mean, now um, with like three D printing, I guess I guess there's yeah, no, no excuse, that, especially for a big budget studio. That cosplay apocalypse, though, still. No, yeah, <sighs> but there are some pretty badass ones. There's one that uh, every time we go to a MegaCon and other cons around here, there, there's an Aquaman that's there, and he is out of control. Good. What about that yeah. uh, Space Marine at Epicon? Ooh, we saw gosh, like, yeah. uh, it was like a yeah. full on. Uh, Astartes uh, Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Yeah. It was really impressive. The eyes glowed and everything. There was one that was God, probably 12 foot tall at Megacon one year. Oh, There's yeah, a picture the, the, of Allison. It came mm-hmm. towards her, like trying to hug her. And yeah, it was and like huge. three people to put it together. Probably. Last year, there was one at, at the cosplay contest, I remember. Yeah, in uh, Infinity Con. So, yeah. But bottom line is, though, I mean, I, I completely agree. The Aquaman outfit looks really good. The true to form Captain Marvel outfit looks good. I just, they just, they've had a lot of practice. Yeah. And I feel that, I mean, I feel even the outfits of the DC, you know, side before. Pre Aquaman look look good as well. Yeah, the Batman, the yeah. new Batman one looks great. Yeah, I, I love, love that Batman. It's a great look. It's it's Wonder yeah. Woman looks really good. Wonder She's Wonder always looked good. Yeah, her uh, armor think, actually looks somewhat you know functional. Yeah. Superman and Justice League look good. I'm not. Wi- I'm just not wild about Superman in this universe. But I like. His I know suit. that a lot of people like it. Um, I like him. Um, I don't know. I I like him, and I do like his suit. Um. Mm-hmm. Especially with the brighter colors and not yeah. with the the really dark colors, dull matted blue, yeah, and red, yeah, yeah, and and of course we do still have the Flash and Cyborg weren't great. The stuff in uh, a lot of the stuff sort of in um, Suicide Squad wasn't horrible. No, but it was all there was no real costumes to it either. The no, only one true. that was close was Enchantress, yeah, to a costume. Everybody else was in kind of like clothes, dirty clothes, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I'm not sold yet on the on the Shazam one, but we'll see. But the Aquaman one in the trailer, you get it in the last second. Yeah. It's Looks like pretty if, good. Uh, if Tom Hanks and Big beat up people, that's what yeah. Shazam is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the co- Aquaman's costume is hokey, but it is accurate. No, Shazam's outfit is hokey. Yeah, Shazam's, no, is, Shazam's is real hokey. Shazam's is 90s TV show hokey. No, no, I'm just saying just the con- the the... Aquaman's overall, like even in the comics, just the orange and the green tights. It's just it's hokey looking, but it's I'm accurate. just fucking ready for him to have a damn hook hand. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's about time we have yeah. uh, the Buster is that Bluth Peter, of the is DC that, yeah. Universe show. Was that up. the Peter David run of Aquaman? Yeah, yeah. it was. That's yeah, all the stuff cut it's off like of it. Issue two that that happened or yeah. something like that. No, that was a badass uh, Aquaman, and that was more what. The Mimosa, uh, Momoa Aquaman um, looks like to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, we got one more teaser this week: uh, Rocket Man, which is based on uh, which is based on Elton John. TJ already has a Rocket Man yeah. movie. He loves. I, love. I think I'm going to watch that tonight. Rocket Man. Come on, William guys. Sadler and Harlan Williams. <laughs> is so good. Sometimes, when he's singing the Sometimes whole I don't world. know he's got why I world. invite you people in my house. Huh? <laughs> when, he's got, when he starts singing, he's got the whole world, and he starts doing all the different languages. Mm. Oh, you mean the fake gibberish Chinese? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. So uh, what were your thoughts on this on this teaser? It looks good. It and looks really good. I'm kind of... I I'm, love Elton John's music. Oh. I, ni- I like seeing this trend, too, of the music biopics kind of coming yeah. back. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the... To the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. There's Next that month. one... Is that next month or December? It's next month. I think it's God, the beginning Lord. of November. Yeah. That yeah. one looks incredible, and I'm hoping this one's just as good, because I do love, I love Elton John. Uh, I, his music is so... He is the best uh, homosexual piano-playing Brit that I can think of, for oh. sure. Oh, Liberace British? Because we about to, we about to throw down some hands. <laughs> no, he, I think he was I think Italian. He was Liberace's American. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is he? I don't know anything about Libera- Liberace. Uh, and it shows. Know, I, I think it um, shows. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't do it that often, though. Ignorance. So uh, we have some sad news. Scott Wilson, uh, who played the part of Herschel in The Walking Dead, uh, passed away the other day at the age of seventy-six. He was supposed to be was uh, the other day or this morning. It was 
or yesterday. It was it late was recent? yesterday. Yeah, and yeah. this comes out on Monday. So okay, I think it was late Saturday. It happened. I uh, want to say they're keeping the uh, the details and everything right now. He was supposed to be joining Walking Dead the the next season Point for flashbacks. Yeah, I yeah, probably something like that. So. It has to be something like that. He was a really good character actor. I've seen him in I a really lot of stuff. Him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Cold Blood was another thing they said he was in. Okay, I, he anything I, like you said anything I've seen him in, he was a great. He was always you know just real solid, mm-hmm. and he was really good in The Walking Dead. He added a lot to to the 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 episodes that he was in and everything. So he's he was a good moral compass, missed. very much so. Less whiny than their former moral compass Dale. Yeah. Oh gosh, Fuck Dale! You. Fuck you, Dale! Dale. <laughs> Your Trump said. All right, guys. Well, you want to come back and we'll answer some. Uh, no. Some yeah, let's finish this up. I think we have at least one, so we'll check. Bye. Let's, okay. You talk me into it. All right, everyone. This is your favorite part of the podcast where we answer your questions. So we have a listener that posted on the Nerds Who Get Laid Facebook that if you're not following, go follow because we ask a lot of fun questions on there uh, throughout the week. Or our Instagram or Twitter. Or- yeah, we're on the Instagram and Twitter and we do the same thing on there. So whatever your um, social media poison is, follow us on there. Yeah, Chuck Snapchat sometimes. Yeah, he does. He, yeah. he, he does the chat and snaps. Uh, Allison asks, what is your most what was your most creative Halloween costume? Ooh, so we're coming into speak, spooky season, into October. Every season, spooky season. Sixth grade, the last year I was able to... Uh, uh, Halloween costume. To costume. I did a, a really nice hobo. <laughs> <laughs> a really nice with, one? With a greased beard and everything. Oh, gosh. <laughs> classic hobo. That's classic. It was nice. Chuck, what was your most creative Halloween costume? Uh, Buffalo Bill it from was the probably my second or third year at Chuck, Roadhouse. Chuck, while no. you're while you're speaking, can you stop playing with your thing, please? No, I'm gonna keep playing with my <laughs> thing. I'm gonna bring it every week. I do bring it every week, but uh, no, I think it was like second or third year at Roadhouse. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna be friendly. creative <laughs> with my costume. Wait, what, Mike? Friendly, yeah. yes, be friendly, friendly. But uh, I decided to go as a uh, a wrestler that was uh, employed by Total Nonstop Action. I took the thing's head off. Uh, I dressed up as the Monster Abyss while he was doing his insane asylum uh, gimmick. So a lot of people knew who you were. (laughs) No, I actually had people that did not come around me because they did not know what to expect. I literally had I bought a black wig and uh, I bought a Jason little hockey mask and I had cut it to replicate the mask that Abyss wore and I had found an insane asylum. jumpsuit cut the sleeves off that taped my arm up and drew like all these shitty tribal tattoos because that's what he had on him and i carried around a fucking logging chain nobody sat or came near me yeah of course i mean were you surprised that just screams friendship yeah and caring. but these were people that i worked with and they even did not know though. who i was not to mention <laughs> Hygiene for the meat cutter. I wasn't no. I was carrying f- your logging chain around. No, 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 no. I was fry guy at the time. <laughs> Just gonna cut no, the. Meat I hadn't even gone into the meat room at this chain. point yet. <laughs> yeah, I think that's when they banished chain. you to the meat room. Well, this guy, this fucker needs to be cutting out. meat up. <laughs> Keep him in the freezer. <laughs> but I know. I mean, it was it was the one time I'm like, because I never really dressed so, up. I never really trick or treating. So I just went all out for it, and I drank and literally sat by myself and. People had are like, a great time. Fuck? So essentially, what we're finding out here, I've never watched Dexter, but I understand that his father figure um, uh, uh, knew that he was a serial murderer, a serial killer, and uh, trained him to do whatever he does in the show. Uh-huh. And uh, so, what we're finding out is that the GM at Texas Roadhouse <laughs> <laughs> did the same thing for Chuck. Oh, no, no, he <laughs> He's going to be cutting up something. Let's put him in the meat room. Yeah. I Let's probably put get rid of a body. It's for good. I probably can get rid of a body. Uh, TJ, what was your most creative Halloween costume? Um, was it Clone Two? No, oh, that's not okay. creative. Not creative. Yeah, that's just getting away. <laughs> just doing <laughs> the bare minimum to get by. <laughs> that sounds like TJ creative. Though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you sit there all pleased uh, with yourself. <laughs> I, 
uh, one year in tenth grade. Oh, um, that's close. <laughs> <laughs> so late. <laughs> it's so late. It hurts. <laughs> so one year in tenth grade, um, I had um, I tore up some uh, of my older clothes, and I looked like someone had beat the shit out of me. <laughs> Uh, so because I, we had I just ju- haven't imagined. I just imagined that every year uh, in, uh, for TJ's costume from the, from from early childhood was I'm clone TJ. I'm beat up TJ. I'm going to work TJ. No, um, but I look like I'd been run over by a car. Basically, is how bad it looked. So we had a Halloween party at uh, ROTC that, uh, and then I got out of it and I was waiting for my ride. And I'm sitting there in the school parking lot. And the police officer drives by and is like, man, are you okay? <laughs> look like you've been beat the fuck up. I'm like, no, nah, man, it's just costume. Are you sure? Because <laughs> we'll find them if you need us to. <laughs> no, oh, good, thank you. Man. So, officer, I know who did it. I see him every day <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I had one year that uh, I, my, my entire costume idea was I was going to make a jet pack. Um, so I worked on this jetpack for probably about a week or so, and Never coming up flew. to the uh the Halloween party that I was going to be attending, um, some of it did not work. Like it had what it didn't work. No, it like a lot of it worked. I had it uh was wired your, to where have you wearing a mole costume? No, okay, or your I, uncle. I had it where it wired to like a little arm thing where I could turn on the fans that I, I installed on it. it. Had LEDs and all this, and it was really cool. But the actual jet parts, um, I couldn't figure out a way to get them to stay on the thing that I made. So that was pretty lame. Uh, but uh, my, mm, why can't you be this creative now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, and my because everyone kept being like a jet pot packs. Not a costume, but that was going to be, uh, be my thing. Was like, what yeah, are you dressed up as? Damn it! I was like, <laughs> I have a jetpack. That's what I am. I have a jetpack. It's like a jetpack so. in a fish bowl with like little like <laughs> you know, yeah, like, like James Bond. Pack. But uh, then there was another year that someone just showed up at my house and was like, "Hey, we're going to go do Halloween stuff. Do you want to come?" And I'm like, "I don't have a costume," but I went in. Um, and found a, a gray vest I had and a, a dress shirt and some <laughs> pants and some gloves and then wrapped my entire face up in gauze and went as the Invisible Man, which was one of my favorite like impromptu costumes. Not a lot of not a lot of creative costumes here. I was thinking you just stripped down to <laughs> tidy whities. He's like I'm, the I'm invisible, invisible man. Yeah. You can't see me. <laughs> there's this uh, there's this new trend going around. I saw it on Tosh Point uh, but apparently where oh I've seen this. You, you you get everybody like a kid trusts to convince them that he's invisible and they can't <laughs> see them. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> and it's it, it it you can tell like it just destroys the kids on a fundamental level. It's it's, it's better. It's pretty if you funny. Make them think that you that they they're talking, but they you can't someone. hear anything. Oh. I'm sure you've done that. Oh yeah. <laughs> That one's fun. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, that is our episode. And like we said earlier, there will not be an episode next week. So yes, we will be just go back and listen to all way. our other episodes for you us. Can, you can follow Chuck live tweeting mm-hmm. his whole week, his weekend. It sucks. At Nerds Who Get Laid on uh, on the Twitter. Yeah. It's at Butcher Toilet. That's his <laughs> personal <laughs> handle. And if y'all are nice, I might give you a review of. Bad times at the Hotel Royale. Oh, I do. Mm. Want to I finally Actually, saw no, the yeah. I, I think I'm going to wait till y'all get back to go see that. Just whatever you do, yeah. make sure to mark spoilers all over. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, That's right. Of your nature. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you listening. My appreciate nature. You. It is his nature. It is. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and uh, have a good one. Yep. See you around the iceberg. See y'all in two weeks, everybody. 
Nerds Who Get Late Sometimes is recorded at the illustrious Big Brown Record Town Studios in beautiful downtown Lake City. Episodes are published each Monday on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and Google Play. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerds who get laid. We're at nerds who get laid on Twitter and Instagram. We're part of the Geeks Worldwide Podcast Network. You can find reviews and articles we write at thegww.com. We're also part of the Modest Pod Podcast Network. We're on floridageekscene.com and also we be geek pc.com please subscribe rate and review us on itunes stitcher radio and podbean you can also check out the show notes for links about things we talked about in this episode thanks so much this has been a production of the gww radio network please don't forget to subscribe rate and review us on itunes stitcher and soundcloud Also, check out Geeks Worldwide at thegww.com for all the latest news, reviews, and opinions on video games, comics, movies, TV, cosplay, and more. Geeks, assemble!